actually it was kind of scary um, when we first knew about it. It was kind of like a, a, a hearsay thing in the community and when everybody, you start watching the news and you start picking up a lot of stuff. I mean, there's a lot of information out there that people don't know about. It's not officially what what's happening, actually. Um, I think it was in our community that we thought it was a lot scarier in the beginning because uh, I guess they, they hired it, the level of, uh, you know, exposure. Um, in our community, I was more worried about our, you know, our elders, like they said, it was targeted at our most, most valuable elders, the older age, and all the younger people didn't really realize, you know, it could affect everybody at the time. So I was more concerned about our community being uh, infected, um, how, how you got infected, when you can get infected, um, you know, things like that. You touch certain areas that other people touched, and because uh, I've never been through a pandemic before, so it was really new, and I, I know it's new to everybody else too, so. Yeah, our clients, we were in behavioral health, we had a stoppage actually of it, and uh, only because we didn't know exactly who would have it if, you know, the, our clients could come in the door and they could have it and we wouldn't even know about it. So um, all clients were stopped at the moment, which was um, kind of sad because, you know, they're consistently coming because they're, you know, they're, they, want it, they want us to help them. And this is like a weekly thing, maybe once or twice a week, so whether it's alcohol and drug or mental health. And with them being gone and out of, out of the building, a lot of them, you know, we, we talked about being Zoom meetings and meeting with them that way or through the phone. And it's, it's just not the same. But uh, yeah, that was the only way we could communicate with our clients, so. I kind of got, I, I went through the workouts. I know I went down there. It's kind of a, a thing for me to work out every day. And I know you guys know about it. Um, I, I've been busy with baseball a lot, so I got to stay in shape. Um, once the gym closed and everything, I kind of had to figure it out. So in the mornings at six o'clock, I get up and go run. And then I do my own workouts on my porch, which I've been doing since we've been locked down since March. So it's been over a year now since I'm kind of getting used to it now, kind of, and uh, it's kind of like an individual workout now. The people don't watch you. You got to do it yourself. So you're kind of relying on your own ability to, you know, keep going. In March, when they they shut everything down, we we figured that our league would, in Portland was shut down too. So I know all outside sports and everything, but. In uh, Washington, I guess the two levels are different. So in Oregon and Washington. So we ended up playing in Vancouver, Washington last year and that didn't start until the end of July. Um, our, our things that we had to play with our mask on and be six feet. So a lot of us were like, if there was four guys in the dugout, the rest of us had to be outside the dugout. So, um, and if we're on base, we got to keep our mask on and stuff like that and kind of keep a distance. And it was kind of hard and being like that and <clears throat> during that time I wasn't used to my mask so if I got a double or something I'd be breathing hard at second base for sure <laughs> and uh, my traveling uh, all we did was go to Portland or go to Vancouver and I, that was my travel so um, I didn't travel until I think October I went to Phoenix to the World Series and um, we ended up going into stadiums, just the teams went into stadiums, no fans, nobody else. Um, we had to have a mask on. <clears throat> we had to play with our mask on and then um, we had to sanitize our hands once we came in the dugout every time. So, cause uh, the bats and everything that everybody touches, the helmets. Um, yeah, it was, it was pretty, pretty good, but they, they were pretty sharp on it, so. Well, the vaccination, I was, I, was, I was good about it only because I delivered to seniors through the whole pandemic. I, I delivered senior meals uh, three times a week. And um, the reason why we did that was to keep seniors at home um, during this pandemic so they wouldn't come out and you know, go out and, in the community. Um, I was more excited about getting vaccinated because I wasn't sure exactly, you know, same thing. We didn't want to you know, infect our seniors 
and at the same time you don't want to infect yourself at the same time so when I got vaccinated it was a it was a good feeling but at the same time you figure out you know your loved ones your your family you know if they're going to get vaccinated too so and uh, that was more of a concern to me because I was thinking my mo my mother I'd rather have my mother get vaccinated than myself so because my mother's I think she's 79 so you know I was more worried about her than myself so Yeah, I met a lot of new people actually um, through, they knew me and everything, but I really didn't know them personally. Once I did the route, um, I started in March. I think it was like um, somebody just showed me the route because I didn't really know the, the addresses because you don't see addresses on, <laughs> on the streets pretty much. So uh, once I got to within a month, people started recognizing that I'd been going there for a month and pretty soon it was like six months. And then uh, winter time came and I was more worried about the snow, but we didn't have any snow. So um, I made a lot of connections and the usual route, I um, we used to be told to um, deliver meals to, uh, to the outside and they would come out and get it, which I didn't think it was right because, you know, seniors, you'd rather just serve it to them and give it to them, bring it to the door. So that's what I did. So I think I made an impact with them on that. But um, yeah. I made a lot of new friends, you know, on my routes. Um, I would, I would um, suggest them to just keep on distancing, uh, wear your mask. Uh, we're not at it clear. I know that for sure. You hear different things, people coming up and saying that, uh, you know, they're not vaccinated yet. And there's a lot of people, I mean, our community could be vaccinated, but once you go out to, in the community, uh, you know, to Madras, Ben, Redmond and stuff like that, there's a lot of people out there that hasn't been vaccinated yet. So um, health wise, um, I would just keep the mask on. Just continue, do it until everybody says, well, now you can take your mask off. So that's the best thing you do. You, you, you worry about yourself, your family, your elders, especially in our community.